Hello and welcome and thank you for joining me. Today we're going to look at Summer 25 release features mostly focused on flow. All right, so the first portion, I'm going to cover some of the email related features that are pretty exciting and I want to demonstrate by using an example. So I'm going to create a new flow that is going to be a record trigger flow. And by the way, there's also a lot of changes around the UX. Um, as you can see, there's this different categories frequently used. So flow as a whole has gotten uh, a lot of like um, UX updates that you will see as I go along. I'm gonna use a record triggered flow and in this scenario what I'm trying to do is uh, basically as soon as the opportunity is closed I want to send an email to all the opportunity contacts that were part of that opportunity. So very simple flow. Um, let's just do record is updated and I'm gonna add a condition here. Closed equals true. So that's a very basic condition. And I'm also going to illustrate a bunch of other capabilities that will be helpful, hopefully. Now I'm going to get the contacts roles related to that opportunity role. And I'm trying to get where opportunity ID equal to the triggering opportunity contact roles. So all records here, I've got that. And now once I have the contact role, uh, I want to show you the transform as well um, so what i'm really interested in in the contact ids i'm going to do that so i can get the contact emails that's what i'm really after and here i'm going to just say contact ids we haven't used transform it's pretty powerful so i don't have to use a bunch of flow um, loops here this and all i'm interested in is the contact ids so i'm gonna create a target for of text type and allow multiple values create and that's gonna be my contact ID. So then now I'm going to add the contact ID to this collection. So this is gonna contain all my contact IDs in the transform. And then I am trying to now get all the contacts so I can get the emails. So I'm going to say contact ID is in that contact ID collection from the transform, okay? So this is just to get the emails. And now I'm going to just get all the records and choose fields. And I'm really interested in the email because I'm trying to build my email collection. And once I have that, I can do the same thing and get all the emails in a collection using another transform. This time I'm going to say get contact emails and this time the source is the contact and I have the email here and I'm gonna create another target with the text type and allow multiple. So that creates that and then I'm going to just map the email to this contact emails. Now I have got my contact emails. In this example, we're getting the contact emails and then we also want to get all the files attached to the opportunity when the email goes out in order to send all of that as an attachment to the email. And I will show that in a second. So first of all, to get the files attached, we are going to use get records and we're going to get content document link the object typing content document link and the way to get the content document links related to the opportunity is by using linked entity id and this needs to be the current record that is triggering so that's the triggering opportunity dot opportunity id and there might be more than one files attached to it we want to include all of that in our final email so i'm going to do all the records um and we can let all the fields stay there that's fine and I'm gonna rinse and repeat the transform elements. All of this to do, I'm trying to get the file IDs in the end. So uh, first I have to actually get the content document link, content document ID. For my source data is going to be the content and for the target, it's going to be just a text type. And then I'm going to just store the content document ID and I'm gonna use content document ID, map this to this. So that contains all the content document IDs. Then I have to do another, the last one, content version. That's what is going to have our document. Um, so let's do that, content version. And now we want the content document ID in document ID that we just created. So uh, basically the way to get the attachment IDs is first you have to get the content document link, um, use the content document ID to then get the content document version. Now I have the content version. We actually just need the ID of the content version. So I'm just going to simplify this and just choose the ID that we need and then use another transform to get the collection of the version IDs text. Same thing. And then we're just going to map this ID to this. So that includes our content version ID. Now getting to the actual enhancement. 
So let's use the action called send email. Simple. If I just search for send email. Now this one has a lot of goodies. I'm just gonna walk you through from top to bottom. Um, you can now have the recipient CC and BCC as an address collection. So you don't have to manually put everything in here. We can just do that. So for my recipient address collection, I can just use the email collection that I have created, contact emails. BCC, let's imagine we're just gonna use the same contact emails because I don't have another list. So you can now have this collection over here, which is awesome. Um, and you can also configure the sender detail type. So if you wanted your sender type to be coming from the current user, your org wide email address or default workflow user, you could do that. Um, you can also have email addresses for the sender. I'm just going to leave it as um, current user in this scenario. And this is amazing that now you can also have the option to either use an email template or comp compose your email right here. Instead of having to use a text template, then using that in your body, you can just compose your email right here in this. Um, so let's say I wanted to have opportunity is closed. This is my subject. I can just type right here. I can enter resources. So I can use all of your um, lovely flow um, resources that you already have. So this definitely makes your email body more rich and you can get all the data basically that you have flow has access to by using this. Uh, I'm just going to keep it simple and to illustrate this, um, make it bold, align this. And um, as always, you can have rich text formatted body and make it true so you can get to see the rich text. I'm going to just, uh, just to demonstrate, going to add some values from the opportunity. Maybe let's do the account name and see what that looks like on the email body. So you can add all of the information from your opportunity or any other related objects. Um, and additionally, the feature that I wanted to show as well is the attachment ID collection. So if you have a requirement where you wanted to send email out to third party or people using Salesforce as a, here's the win opportunity and here are all the documents that were generated on that opportunity, for example, you could just enter that collection ID here. Um, you can also, if all of your opportunity just have a simple attachment that you want to share, maybe it's your document or an MDA or whatever um, agreements that you have, you can just add your um, hard-coded attachments um, if that fits your requirement, or you can get the attachments from your opportunity just like how I did here and enter that collection here. So I'm just going to use my version ID because that's what contains all the attachment IDs. And there's also a related record ID to make sure you are logging the send email to the right um, records. If you have recipient ID to log towards that record. You can also do record ID. And there's options. You can do record or search resources. I'm going to use resources from this flow, which is my um, record that triggered the opportunity. So I want to make sure it's logged against that opportunity ID. And I can say, um, once you select that, um, it will ask log email on send. Um, this will indicate whether you want to log it or not um, to show it on the activity timeline. So I'm going to take this through. And yes, those were pretty much the majority of the features that are on email. Um, another thing you can do is use email template as well. And um, that would mean you could select email templates directly from here instead of having to get the email template ID and all. And all the other features still remain the same. It's just the body of the email. You want to use the email template or you want to compose your own email content. And I just lost everything. And if you want to continue to use the older version, you can always go back to the initial version. Um, all the new flows will have this. The older flows will still have the old version and you can select the appropriate dropdown that you want to use. Okay, I'm going to save this. Oh, I have to use the because I changed it to email template. So once you are using one, if you flipped over to the other one, you will lose your progress. Just the heads up. Save that. And hopefully no errors. Great. So now we can um, test this out. I'm going to go to debug and I want to also show you the debug features changes. Um, and by the way, if you haven't already noticed, all of this also looks pretty brand new. I really like how sleek it looks. All the components are nicely 
arranged here, but it just looks much cleaner. Um, I really like this view. Okay, I'm going to debug and I'm gonna skip start conditions and use an opportunity that I have. And this has um, one attachment as well as uh, two emails. Okay, so I'm gonna run this now. And as you see, the debug section looks also very clean. I love this. Um, it makes debugging a lot easier. Looks like the debug runs successfully. I didn't see any error. Um, and I can see that there are email addresses here and the body is here as well as the attachment ID. So I'm going to now activate this so we can see this in action. And I have um, two contact roles and one file here. Go back here and we can see I've got my email coming in. I want to see why this is not giving me the rich text like I had hoped. What happened? Um, if I go back to edit flow and look at the email. Make sure, okay, I did not mark this as true. So that makes sense. I'm gonna save this as a new version. And this is part of the work. Um, I'm not going to edit this out so you can see how you can go back and tweak things. All right, let's go back here. I should have gotten another opportunity. And this time I have everything reserved. Uh, the rich text is coming in. I have the account name and the attachment as we expected. Awesome. All right, um, next feature I wanna focus on is around screen flow. So let's look at new flow again. And this time we're gonna use a screen flow and we're gonna keep it a simple screen flow. So there are just some UX enhancements. Um, so let's just add a screen here so we can look at it. First one I want to talk about is you no longer need to have your fields displayed inside a section for you to be able to control the style. So in this case, I just dragged and dropped email here. And you can see we now have this new thing called style. And I can just go to that style and change how I want it to look. I want a one of 12, it's too tiny, five of 12. There's also alignment. Um, top bottom for this component so that's one and as you can see right here you can also see the preview size so not all your users are using the same size of screen and if you wanted to see what this could look like in a mobile so maybe let's add one more thing right here address i'm gonna move it dial it to 6 of 12 so it's coming here so this is what it looks like in large right but if I want to see what it looks like in a small window, I could do that. And you can see this is what it would look like in a small window. So maybe I don't like that. Maybe I want to organize it differently. And another fun thing is now with the pick list, you can have icons displayed along with the pick list. So let's look at a choice lookup. So this is a choice lookup. I'm going to create a very simple choice. Just calling it yes. Yes, and here you'll see a new option called choose icon and I can say whatever icon I want and I can also have emoji. So think of like if you wanted a quick um, survey, like tell me about your experience and stop having a bunch of text or something like that, you could just have uh, an emoji of like smiley face or the frowning face. Um, so if you could keep scrolling down, you can see there's a excellent was great perfect that's my yes emoji and or no terrible the worst okay um and so there are two kind of uh, related features here so one if you use a choice lookup and note that this is only possible with a choice lookup you cannot use this feature with like a normal pick list uh, with a choice lookup what you can do is make the emojis that we just chose or the icons available as users are selecting. So it's just also a good way to visually let your users know what they're choosing. So let's say if you wanted to have a pick list for methods of communication, email, message, call, you could use all those icons uh, to prevent kind of like a text overload and people can quickly see what they want to choose if it's a phone symbol versus a message symbol. So this, that's only possible using a choice lookup. Um, another thing is, an on pick list is now you can use a visual picker. So 
let's say if you have a bunch of radio options selections that you want you just to quickly see you can use visual picker and here you can use i'm just going to use the same choice that i just created yes and no and it can appear as this kind of like a file selection so again making your users quickly able to see what they want to select and it also will have the answers underneath it but it's just a quick way to know what that could look like save as expected this is what this would look like and for the choice you can see the drop downs right here pretty cool i like i really like this and uh, this also enhances the visual look of your flows which flows screen flows generally lack so it's nice to see some visual features being added into the screen and there are a lot of beta features that i want to mention i could not give it a try because um, some of them do require you to sign an agreement and i'm going to try it on my own org um, but just being able to get related records faster so this means like wanted to query um, account and get all of the related records in a collection i did not see this feature uh, i need to get it enabled um, just a lot of features around getting records faster and being able to do searching um, that expand search that i noticed in some of the components um, so for example if you're looking for any search so like if i wanted to search over here um, for a resource I could use this expand search and this will allow you to even go under the hood and look at related like nested um, components which is nice so there's an expand search capability those were some of the big features that i noticed around flows um, there is another section for flow approval processes um, there's a lot of features around approval process that i'm going to cover in a separate video but uh, as a highlight um, when you go to approval process you will see that um, it has an option to go to open approvals app and that opens up an app for you and here you can create flow approval process and you can use a wizard and it basically will create things for you um, like if you wanted a one level approval process if you wanted a final action or not do you want to recall path or not and this just creates a sort of a template for you but you still need to add your approvals um, or add any flows that it needs to be. So we can cover this in a different video, but there's just a lot of features around approval process as well. Uh, so the key features for me were all the screen flow enhancements, the email actions, um, which I really love, all the enhancements around the debugging and getting related records, um, as well as the approval process. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video.